Good morning. It is Ben Ochart with the uh, Cyber Cichlid Tank. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for joining. And uh, I see we have quite a few folks here. Let's see. They've been chatting. And hey, Tony, Tony, um, if you already have stickers, uh, that's okay. But if you don't, Send me your name and address uh, to the ben.o.cichlid because I noticed you were first on the chat and I'll send you some stickers and uh, some some of the uh, channel stickers that have the channel logo on them. So welcome, friends. I appreciate you uh, being here today. Uh, that's my cyber cyber uh, cyber tank in the background there. And uh, let's go ahead and officially uh, officially launch this live stream. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that, uh, hit that sub button. And uh, that tells me you like the content. And uh, we have about a 30% uh, subscribed uh, rate. In other words, about 30% of the people who watch the content are actually subscribed. Uh, the um, a big shout out to all of you who have helped put the channel over 30,000. We actually broke 30,000 this week. Thank you so much for that. Uh, way beyond anything I ever imagined would happen when I first started uploading uh, videos of that 30 gallon uh, discus tank that I had that I converted to cichlids and then quickly turned that into a turned that into a 60 gallon tank. But, uh, you know, 100 views was like amazing back then. And uh, a couple subscribers was amazing. Uh, 30,000. Uh, thank you so much. You folks really, you really do rock. And uh, for those of you who want to support the channel, uh, you have various ways. Use the Amazon link to do your shopping on Amazon. I'm an affiliate and get a small percentage. And also, of course, you can visit Teespring for t-shirts and uh, coffee mugs and stuff like that and that that all helps the channel and of course you being here and watching the videos that's how you support the channel the most and uh, it's very very appreciated so um this is going to be the last uh, live stream until i get settled and set up in nashville the uh process i'm hoping is going to be relatively smooth if you saw my living room right now it looks like a like a like like a U-Haul uh, staging area. It's all boxes, and uh, the the move is uh, the truck is coming on the thirtieth, and I'm going to be driving, and um, because I've got to take a couple dogs, a couple beagles, and uh, along with my youngest daughter, and we're going to be stopping at the uh, Cichlid Shack and uh, paying James a visit and taking a look at some of his stock, and he said he has an important announcement. For all of you so um, it's gonna be interesting to see what he has to say he has some beautiful fish that he's that he's just gotten in and uh, so it's gonna be very interesting to see what he has to say and I think I think he's closed on Sundays but Sunday's the day we're, we're coming through his area so he's gonna make a, a special trip and open up the shop and that's James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack if you're not familiar with the Cichlid Shack check him out uh, once you go shack, you don't go back, I think is the motto of the uh, <laughs> great selection of fish. And on my list of what I call uh, legit fish providers, you know, we have uh, we have the cichlid shack, of course. We have Wonder of Cichlids. We have Life Fish Direct. We have, uh, uh, let me see, Cunning uh, Cunningham Cichlids. Uh, you know, folks like that that I've used in the past with great success. I have them on my list of legit fish providers. I'm going to be using them along with other providers because I'm going to be getting into other kinds of fish. And uh, I wanted to share with you folks the kinds of fish I'm going to be getting into and the ones that are uh, starting to interest me. Now, uh, don't forget, during this, this uh, interim, there's still going to be a lot of uh, content being posted. And uh, you can see, uh, let's see here. You can see here there's been uh, there's been a fair amount of content and there's some still in the queue to be released. Uh, some people are asking, wait a minute, I thought you sold your tanks. So just realize that they're all filmed before I sold the tanks. 
I didn't lie to you about selling the tanks. <laughs> At any rate, the um, you can see here I've got uh, uh, tips for buying aquariums. That'll be out on the 31st. And uh, the, uh, the Piscine uh, Fish uh, Feeding Masterclass is going to be starting on the 28th. That's a five-part video series. It's a five-part series. And uh, the first one is going to be a... Uh, an introduction to Piscine, to uh, to Harry Fisher, the owner of Piscine, and the Piscine process, and then we're going to start getting into what makes fish food uh, good, what makes it bad, uh, things to watch for, things to look at when you look at labels, and and the kind of processes that are used to to dry out food, and why some are are, are workable, why some are are very very bad, and it's going to be a very interesting five part series. Uh, some uh, fish. Food producers are not going to like me after that series. Uh, that's okay. I never make videos for uh, commercial organizations to like me. So <laughs> uh, we also have something on coming up on algae, getting rid of uh, uh, algae, in particular um, brown algae that can show up after starting up a new tank. And uh, a couple of videos that are recently released got a pretty good response. I think the uh, tips for a stable aquarium are up to about almost 3,000 and uh, maintaining a crystal clear aquarium, pristine water is up to, uh, it's probably at 5,000 now. I took these numbers off a little bit ago. So uh, those are doing well. So there's going to be um, content released throughout the process. Uh, so don't go away. Don't unsub. <laughs> On the contrary, sub, tell your friends to sub. Let's keep the channel growing. And there's going to be uh, a steady release of content including that uh, that that five part uh, that five part uh, series on Piscine, which I'm very excited about and uh, that'll start on the 28th and then I'll probably just release one after the other and I still have to do some editing and to get those uh, to get those put together but the first one's already done and ready for you so um, I'm, I'm excited so um, <clears throat> With that being said, let me take a look, a little a quick look here at the chat. And I noticed that somebody jumped in with a super chat. Leo, thank you so much, Leo. Much appreciated. We'll use it for gas money to get us over to Tennessee. And uh, for those of you not familiar with the super chat, that's where you can go to the bottom of the comment section and uh, throw a little money at the channel. Very appreciated. Thank you, Leo, for that. And I appreciate that. So um, if there's any more that I missed, I'm sorry. I try not to look at the chat when I'm talking because it can be very distracting, as you know. So um, let's take a look here at uh, what I'm, I'm considering. I've, 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 got, I've been looking into South American cichlids and... Uh, I've, I've like fallen in love with some, some that you know about already. I mean, you know uh, about the green tear and uh, how I was uh, smitten, <laughs> love at first sight. Uh, I love that green tear variety with the orange, uh, orange uh, edge on the tail, the long trailing dorsal. I have also um, started looking into what are sometimes referred to as red tears. Uh, these fish, these red tears are absolutely gorgeous. And um, I'm a little bit concerned about what I can keep in the tank. I think I'm going to get a, um, a, fairly, a few fairly large tanks to start off with. And then um, and maybe pick up like five, maybe five green tears, five red tears, and uh, a few other fish. And then let them put on size and establish dominance and and then when i get the the sort of pick of the litters the most amazing ones then i'll go ahead and uh, decide uh, who i'm going to keep and also be able to monitor any um aggression you know violence that kind of stuff that will come up with these fish being together but beautiful just beautiful specimens i'm looking forward to them if you know if you know a, a good source a source that you've used for uh, New World South American cichlids, uh, share them. You know, share those sources. I I, I certainly think that uh, James has has some things for me to look at over at the Cichlid Shack. Anybody that you've used, I, I I ran across a place called Coastal Cichlids. 
They seem to have a lot of these uh, South American varieties that I'm looking at. If you know of some uh, sources that you've had good results with that you feel are legit, uh, that have a real good, um, you know, real good policy, stand behind their fish and, and, uh, and deliver good quality fish, uh, let me know in the chat because this, uh, you know, the South American New World cichlid thing is kind of new for me. So um, we're always learning from each other, right? And this is one of these uh, where I'm going to be learning from you that are keeping South American and New World cichlids. Um, of course, of course, you know I'm going to have African cichlids. So um, I'm probably going to start out with, again, handfuls of younger cichlids and, uh, and, and grow them out. Perhaps pick up like, you know, five ruby reds, uh, five Benga sunshines, uh, five flame tails, and and let them let them grow grow out, and um, you know some Plastidochromus for sure, some deep waters. Let them grow out, put on some size, and, and then uh, decide which ones I keep, which ones I, I sell or give away, and um, and then go from there. I definitely want to pick up one of those. Uh, one of those long nose uh, cichlids, like the one that you see on the screen now, that was provided to me by James Largo. That was a beautiful fish. Grew him out from a little one inch juvie, and he was just gorgeous. Very docile, really kept to himself, didn't make any trouble, and uh, really liked him a lot. And um, we'll see, we'll see. There's some fish, there are some fish that you really want to get when they're already. Um, when they've already colored up because they, they take so long to color up. Your Bucachromus notatanius. I mean, my God, they take forever. If you're going to get an eye biter, get one that's colored up. If you're going to get a, uh, a flame tail, uh, definitely look for, a, look for a confirmed male with color. Uh, there's a list of fish that, uh, that I'm definitely going to um, wait until the younger ones have put on size and then I'm going to go ahead and get them already as, as adult confirmed males because uh, they just take forever. And sometimes at the end of the long journey, uh, you discover it's a female. And so um, I'll be getting some uh, confirmed males. Definitely um, fish like uh, trout, a Malawi trout, I'll definitely get a confirmed male. Maybe another one like the one I got from the Wonder of Cichlids, that 10-inch beast that I sold. Uh, beautiful fish. Uh, Venusus, I'll probably continue with Venusus. I love Venusus. Uh, the um, Vinny was certainly a special fish. And the good thing about Venusus is you can let all your fish put on size and then pick up a smaller Venusus. In my case, I'll probably pick up three or four of them and then just let them, uh, because they grow like weeds, and let them grow and then again, pick the get the pick of the letter, get the most spectacular male, and then return the other ones or sell the other ones. So um, Firehap, you know, I love the Firehap that I had. And um, I'm not sure if I'll get another one. He was so aggressive. And maybe that was just, you know, a one-off kind of thing. And uh, But my Firehap was, was just constantly harassing other fish. I'm not sure if I'll get another. People don't realize that Plastidochromus can be very, very aggressive. Um you know, your, your tangerine tigers, your imperials, um, even your, your Taiwan reefs can be, uh, they can be pretty, pretty nippy, pretty, pretty aggressive. Um, I thought that maybe they wouldn't be. The eye biter that I had was uh, very, very assertive at first. And then as he put on size and found his place in the pecking order below the trout and below the venusus, he actually mellowed out. He became a bit of a mellow eye biter. And, um, uh, Definitely, I'll be getting an electric blue. I think they're gorgeous. They can be a little aggressive, but but they, they do calm down once they settle in. Uh, it's been my experience. I'd love to get um, a living stone eye, possibly a, a, a linny. There's a nimbochromus linny, which when they color up, they're gorgeous. Very unusual shape, just like a gar. I'd love to get a gar in my collection. So I'll probably have like a 60-gallon where I'm growing out African cichlids. Um, a 60 gallon where I'm growing out uh, South American and um, some of the ones that I showed you the green tear and the red tears which um, I've fallen absolutely in love with and uh, I'm thinking also of adding a Jack Dempsey 
a Jack Dempsey to the uh, to to the uh, tank. The Jacks are beautiful. They have a variation of a Jack Dempsey called an electric blue. Um, they're beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure which one I like more. I kind of like the traditional Jack Dempsey, but the electric blue is certainly a beautiful specimen. I'm not sure how big it gets. If you have experience with with Dempsey's, uh, share it. I want to hear everything you everything you got about Dempsey's and whether or not I can keep them. I also like the viejas. The viejas. Uh, some people call them the poor man discus. I like the viejas a lot. They put on beautiful color, and um, and I came across a fish called a, Sal, a salvini. Uh, beautiful again. The salvini up here in the far corner. That salvini with the blue and the black and the red. Oh my God, what a beautiful fish. Again, water parameters, uh, compatibility, I don't know, availability. I mean, these are all factors that I'm, 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 I'm thinking about in the putting together of the tank. I'll probably have, again, um, a, a 60 gallon uh, South American New World cichlid tank where I'll, where, I'll, where I'll have these fish, the Dempsey's, the Salvini, the, the Vieja, uh, fish like that, and then let them put on size. Let's see how their compatibility is, and then start making changes. Like like I evolved through with African cichlids, where you finally get to a point where you have a group that that is getting along. Always, always knowing that at any moment it can change. At any moment, things can blow up. That little switch in their cichlid brain can 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 flip, and you're off to the races. And of course, I am seriously considering uh, a discus tank. And I'm going to be setting up a show tank inside the house, inside the home, where the fish room is technically going to be in the garage. I have a lot of space to work with. I have a massive counter space and storage. I have a, the only thing I'm missing is a sink. So I'm going to be getting a sink from Home Depot and putting it in so I have hot water access. And, um, and then I'll be able to, um, to run just the, the full fish room. It's going to be my fish room, dog room. That's where my, uh, my beagles are going to be spending time with me. And hopefully they're not going to chew on any of the hoses. And um, so I'll have some uh, discus that I'll probably have in the, in the fish room that I'll be sharing with you that I'll grow out and then move to a, uh, to a large rimless, rimless tank that I'll be keeping in the house, something with uh, a nice big piece of arched uh, driftwood. I'd like a piece of driftwood that perhaps has an arch in it and then maybe a, a another branch that comes off. And then I'll, I'll cover that with different types of anubias. I'll glue some anubias onto that piece of driftwood and then put some white sand and, uh, and get it all set up and ready for discus. I'll probably throw a bunch of... Uh, uh, cardinal tetras in there to begin with make sure it's nice and established and then go ahead and start adding discus and uh, I think discus are just beautiful so uh, it looks like somebody jumped in again out of the corner of my eye I caught a super chat let's see here we got Leo Contreras already and do we have another one let me scroll through the chat here Tony, Tony, thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. From London, thank you, my friend. And looking forward to get my stickers. Thank you all for great videos and content. You are welcome, my friend. And yes, stickers are available internationally. I send them everywhere. They're not that heavy, so that are okay to ship. I had a problem with one of the winners of that recent contest. I think they won a small sponge filter. It went to Canada. It, it, the address came back. Uh, the uh, they had a, a customs that issue and a big sticker on it, and it came back to me after I spent twenty five dollars shipping it to Canada. So I'm not shipping anything internationally anymore, but I will send stickers. <laughs> I felt bad because he 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 won this little. I mean this the sponge filter was maybe maybe five bucks, and I spent twenty five to ship it, and then it got shipped back to me by Canada. <laughs> So I sent him a note. I sent a note saying, "Look, I'm sorry. I'm not going to reship this." <laughs> Felt terrible. Thank you, Tony. And um, so that's the plan on the tanks. I mean, it's going to be 
it's going to be African cichlids. It's going to be um, it's going to be South American. It's going to be uh, discus. And I'm still thinking about geophagus, about a tank with a variety of geophagus. And um, and that'll be just sand and decor because they, of course, they, they, they're they always shifting sand. and, and uh, But I think geophagus, are a, they're just a beautiful fish. And so I want to include some of those in the mix. Again, for those of you watching the stream, I, I think we're, what, at 1.30 or so. Uh, for those of you watching the stream, any tips... Any, remember, always be learning. In the back of my T-shirt, I'm not going to turn around, uh, but the back it says always be learning. And uh, the motto, uh, any tips you have on discus, on the compatibility of the African or of the uh, South American cichlids I've mentioned, and uh, any tips that you have, please share them because I, I, I learn from you as much as you learn from me, I assure you. And I'm going into this new venture. I'm kind of a, the type of person that... that uh, that dives in, and then and then uh, and then pulls back and goes, "Okay, what did I learn?" <laughs> and I've paid a hefty price because of that. And so this time, I'm going to do a lot of front end research, and uh, just make sure that I've got uh, that I've got it all all put together before I, I jump in. And uh, I definitely don't want to have uh, make a lot of mistakes that result in costly. Um, you know, that result in cost in, in losing a lot of fish. When I first got into the African cichlids, I threw together uh, fish from different lakes. Um, I think I had some quarry cats in there that got destroyed. I had some rams that didn't last. Um, you know, I'd, I'd go to the, the shop and go, oh, it says cichlid. I'll, I'll, I'll have an all cichlid tank. And of course, we know that cichlids come in many varieties. So I jumped in. I had the uh, I had the losses and the setbacks, and, and then I would pull back and go, okay, what did I learn? You know, even with the sump when I set up the sump, I got water all over the floor, which I'm paying for now because I have a, a stained floor, and uh, you know, it, it, it's I just jumped in and and, uh, and learned the hard way, and uh, if I could give if I give, could give you folks uh, a bit of advice, it would be two things: one research 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 before you jump in please and the second would be never take a sleeping pill and a uh, laxative at the same time <laughs> the second one was a joke so <laughs> so at any rate let's take a look at the chat and see what you folks are having to say here and uh let's see what advice you have for me and I am looking at the chat here, and it might not be the chat that you see on the screen, because I'm using the uh, I'm using the control panel from uh, from YouTube to look at the chat, and so I'll I'll, I'll look at that and see uh, and see what we got here. And uh, if I didn't say it in the beginning, which I, I don't think I did, a big a big shout out and uh, to my moderators. I've got the best moderators on YouTube. Candy is just amazing. I think she has like five arms or six arms. Uh, she's super multitasking. Uh, Denny, uh, I believe, is going to make it today. Uh, Kevin Green uh, and GP uh, Gravinder, wonderful moderators. Big shout out to all of you. And uh, let's see here. Doug, uh, you're right. Uh, Doug, some people have, have uh, sort of assumed, you know, we're going to miss you, wish you would stay in the hobby. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, Doug M, as you said, that's very true. I will be, I, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted. I have a very bad uh, fish addiction. If you're going to be addicted to something, fish is good, uh, better than other things. But um, I'm definitely going to be putting out content in the interim and definitely setting up quickly and sharing with you the process of setting up. And I'm going to be releasing a vlog of our journey across the country, stopping at James Largo's, the Cichlid Shack, uh, you know, just traveling across the country. I'm going to be taking some short video and uh, and then sharing that with you as well. So they'll be like, there's already vlog number one already released or filmed. Then there'll be vlog two, vlog three, vlog four of the Nashville series. Those will be in their own playlist. So um, 
Uh, Terry Spelling, congrats on the 30,000. Uh, great job. Can't wait to see the new setup. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. That uh, wasn't would not be possible without you and the rest of you that are here today supporting and sharing the channel. Uh, thank you so much for that. And um, let's see here. Uh, that's right, R. Baglio. It's not goodbye. It's uh, it's more like a see you later. And uh, but it's more like a stay tuned. Stay tuned. See you later. Um, let's see here. Uh, salt, salt rotter, S A L T R O T T E R, salt rotter. Good luck, Ben, in your new home. Thank you so much for that. And yes, once I get settled in, I will definitely get those videos out, and you'll have videos uh, along the way as well. Andrew Owens, hate to say goodbye. Uh, yeah, I hate you know I hate goodbyes, you know. And uh, but it's not really a goodbye. It's more like a see you later. Let's see. Andrew Owens, uh, Mr. Ben, learned a lot from you. Thank you. I love hearing that. And, uh, you know, I just share what I go through, and some of you find it uh, interesting and useful. I've had, uh, I get feedback from people sometimes under a video. I tried what you suggested in this video, and it worked. Thank you so much. It gives me a lot of joy because um, what you don't see in the video is the five or six other things I tried that didn't work. <laughs> And so I share with you what did work, hopefully, so you don't have to go through the uh, the headache. Hey, T-Bone, glad to see you here. T-Bone's fishes. T-Bone's fishies, is that what that, uh, and good day to you too. And Chevy Fish and Francie. Hey, Francie, been thinking about you. Leo and Gary. Gary Robinson. Hello, Gary, glad you're here. And let's see. Uh-oh, someone jumped in. Mary, Marty. Hey, Marty. Marty Borst, thank you so much. Use it for whatever you please. Thank you. Gas money. It's gas money. The uh, YouTube takes a big bite. I think they take like a third or half, I forget, of everything that comes through on the super. But the, what's left will go into the gas tank. <laughs> All right. And let's see if I got any other. If you have any other questions, go ahead and ask them now. Boy, I love that name. The Chubby Guppy. What a great name. Chubby Guppy. Grumpy Mike's Fish. You guys come up with the greatest names. Terry Johnson. Only had a Mabuna. Now he's got Peacocks after he started watching my channel. You know, I love Peacocks and... Uh, Peacocks are going to be uh, something um, um, very much, uh, very much going to be um, involved in. And uh, I, I've said it before. I mean, if I had to put a peacock tank together, you know, a ruby red, a, a uh, sunshine for sure. And uh, some people like the German red. I love the ruby red. Uh, I think a, 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 a bicolor 500 is a beautiful fish. A flame tail is a beautiful fish. I, I've never had a fully colored up uh, adult male flame tail, and so that's that's like on the on the short list, on the wish list, and um, you know there's so many other beautiful peacock varieties out there. You're you're a blue neon, you're fluorescent. You know if I was putting together a list of of peacocks, if, you know if you're gonna ask me what to put into a sixty or a seventy gallon, I, I just told you those would be the ones to uh, to put in there, and. Uh, I, I just love them. Love peacocks. They're just gorgeous. Uh, Rohit. Rohit. Uh, M-R-I-G-P something. I can't even pronounce that. I'll just call you Rohit. Why did you sell the tanks? The tanks were sold because I didn't want to uh, uh, take them 2,000 miles. And uh, I was going to sell the fish anyway. I didn't want to put the fish through the trauma of the move. So I decided, you know what? Let's just do a fresh start. All the tanks are doing great. I've gotten, I've received videos from everyone that has them, and uh, they're all set up and running. Uh, one of the advantages of buying a tank that's 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 healthy and running, that's a used tank, is that you can take it home and immediately set it up. And that's what these folks did. They immediately set up the tank, and uh, I, I I got a message from Kevin Green that the sixty gallon with uh, with the Lethernops, you know, with Red Cap, uh, that tank is uh, is like 
at 10 parts per million on nitrates and uh, you know zero ammonia zero nitrite i mean it's it's like perfect so um if you i highly recommend if you're going to buy a tank uh, consider buying a a a good condition running uh local local tank because it lets you put fish in immediately and uh so, and if it's in good shape, if it's not scratched up, if it's not beat up, uh, otherwise you got to consider resealing if it's a glass tank. If it's an acrylic tank, you have to consider uh, uh, buffing out some scratches, things like that, you know. So, um, good morning, Frankie. Frankie Fingers. <laughs> Can Acosta 831 has a lot of green tears and golden sums available. Can is that can I, are, you, are you saying coastal cichlids is that what you're saying coastal cichlids is what i think you're saying coastal cichlids they're on my list of hum, because when i did a search uh on those uh, on those particular uh cichlids the the uh the green tear red tear they, they came up and so they're on my short list of potential vendors for south americans of course first and foremost i'm going to stop at at the cichlid shack and see what he's got and uh i know he's got some beautiful discus he uh, sent me some video so uh i might be putting a deposit down on some uh, <laughs> he's gonna have to have a tank set up that that's ben's discus and he can show it in his videos when he does updates and said these are not for sale these are ben o charts <laughs> so um yeah t-bone yeah i'm getting discus don't, I, I don't, it, it's uh, definitely on the list. Let's see here. Talk to, uh, this is Dragon Lair. Talk to Chris, the mad aquarist. Biggs, he knows everyone who has Central American cichlids. Good tip. Good tip, my friend. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, any lead you can give me, give it to me. Larry Skeggs, you have been an inspiration to me, Ben. I hope the future brings you all the love and happiness. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. I appreciate that very much. And uh, means a lot to me. Jason C., South American cichlids are great, but red devils have to be one of the most aggressive fish I've ever seen. Now, is a red devil the same as the red tear? Is that, when you say red devil, do you mean the, the red tear or the Savini? Wh which one are you uh, referring to? I definitely need to know about these aggressive levels because I'm not familiar with them and I don't want to just throw them all together and, and, and create this battle royale and then, you know, wait, you know, hope for the best. Let's see here. Grumpy Mike says he has three Jack, uh, Jack Dempsey's, I guess, in a 90. They are pussycats. Okay. So you can get you know, you can get uh, docile ones. That's good to know. You know, same thing. I mean, I, I've had that experience with uh, the Venusas. I've had Venusas that I had to give away. The second they became large colored up adults, I had to get rid of them because they just became uh, horrible and would keep all the fish corralled in one corner of the tank and uh, wouldn't even let them get to food and, and was constantly, so I'd, I had to give them away. But that last one I had, Vinny, was just a big, just a big sweetheart and, and, uh, he ran the tank. There was no doubt he was the boss. Nobody would mess with him. And uh, but uh, when things were were smooth, he wouldn't harass. He would just drift around. So um, there are exceptions to every fish, except maybe a a dovi, maybe a, you know your uh, jaguar cichlids. Maybe those uh, are going to kill whatever gets in their tank. Doesn't matter. Let's see here. Seth talking about Imperial Tropicals fish food. I didn't realize Imperial had a line of fish food. That's interesting. You'll like that uh, that masterclass on fish feeding that's coming up. If you let's see here, we did say thank you to Tony for that uh, super chat. Uh, Donald's fish vibes. I'm going to get 120 gallon rimless for discus after seeing how Ben takes care of them. Hopefully by next year. Uh, you know, Donald, I'm thinking about a rimless too. I've been looking at the um, water box aquariums and um, 
I just came, uh, I just came into a stand. Uh, my son-in-law has a beautiful stand that was like a TV stand that's really pretty. So I can, I can, so I can pick up a rimless and put it on that stand. That'll save me a lot of money. So I have to buy the stand, and um, or I'll look for a acrylic because I really love the the acrylic. Acrylic, first of all, acrylic is more temperature insulated. Did you know that? Acrylic tanks will give you less temperature fluctuation because they insulate better. Uh, they're much lighter, so they're easier on your floors, easier to move, and uh, they're 40% more transparent than glass. So with an acrylic tank, you really get that floating in air sort of look. And I love the clear for life acrylic tanks that have the curved corners, the curved front corners. So you don't get that graze, that grazing, that little bit of speckling in the seam at the front that you get sometimes over the years with an acrylic tank. So I'm thinking about getting a large, a large uh, clear for life acrylic tank and put it on top of that stand that I scored and then have that be the, the, the living room the living room discus tank. So, um, but I'm, I think acrylic would be the way to go because of the, of the clarity of it, the light, you know, the fact that it's lighter and the fact that you've got those curved corners. The, the good thing about the acrylic in the garage is because I'm, I'm, I'm still working on how to insulate that garage. It's a huge garage. It's like two stories tall, fully finished. Um, so I've got to insulate that. So having tanks that are more um, better insulated and less likely to fluctuate temperature is going to be a big plus. So I'm leaning in the direction of acrylic. The problem with acrylic, of course, is cost. Uh, what you can get for three or four hundred dollars in glass, you'll pay a thousand dollars if you buy brand new acrylic. So I'm looking for good, good shape used acrylics. But when I go on Craigslist, and I'm going to check places like OfferUp, uh, you know, other types, um, other locations. But when you go on those places, it's very seldom you see a very nice acrylic tank. You got to really look, uh, got to be patient. So um, the problem, uh, uh, Philly Man Pete, the problem with wild discus I've heard is that they can be sensitive to the to the water parameters where you have to sometimes go with RO water. And then add add back minerals, and I mean they're not acclimated. I, I want some discus that are um, more more bred locally and are used to the water parameters in the area, and so and are not introducing any kind of new uh, parasite or something that is in the wild, but not in the in the aquarium trade in general. So I'm I'm kind of leaning away from wild. But maybe something like a second generation, like an F1 uh, type of um, you know second generation, would be uh, something I'd consider. Hello, Jason C. Hello, Adam D. Moore. Who haven't I said hello to? Hey, Neil. Good to see you, Neil. And Lindell Bradley, not far from me. I'm in South Carolina. Yeah, you know, Lindell. I didn't realize that Nashville was actually so close. Uh, so close to the East Coast. I, I thought Nashville, in my mind, Tennessee, I thought was like above Texas or something. Of course, we have Oklahoma there, right? So I started really studying the map, and I'm like, wow, I'm I'm not that far from the uh, from the Atlantic. So, uh, the 2,000 mile drive. How about maybe maybe 1,800, maybe 1,700. I don't know. Anyway, I've got 2,000 miles stuck in my head. Donald Fish vibes. I have most of those cichlids you mentioned in my outdoor cichlid pond, 1,200 gallons. Wow. I can get serious in the beginning. What? I can get serious in the beginning. Eventually, they settle down and act up only when breeding. Wow, that's a huge pond. And um, I'd love to see that. If you could send me a short video of that pond setup to ben.o.cichlid at gmail, I'd love to see that, Donald. That sounds like quite a setup. 
and Chevy Fish, Sleeping Pill, and Laxative. Someone who gets my humor. Thank you. <laughs> Set up brackish water. Uh, see, brackish water. You, you say brackish water to me, and you're talking Greek. I've got to study that. I'm not really that sure what, what you mean by brackish, you know? And uh, when I think brackish, I think of a kind of a, of a hazy tank. And, uh, and I'm not really, really kind of a hazy tank kind of guy. Uh, let's see. Tony. I, Tony. Uh, Cancellari, I only, I have only South American cichlids and I've never been lucky with rams. Beautiful fish, but so sensitive to water conditions and challenging to find the right tank companions. I had rams with discus many years ago and same thing. They would only last, they would last under a year and uh, then they would just tip over. And um, I think you're right. I think they're very sensitive to temperature, uh, very, sens um, very, very sensitive. So, uh, but... So are discus. So I'm going to have to really be uh, really on my A game. And that, that's why I want to get some locally bred discus that are a bit a bit more rugged, uh, a bit more tolerant of, uh, you know, the local pH and the local water conditions. I'm going to be checking out that critters, that critters uh, shop over in Nashville. If you're familiar with them or you know the owners, uh, give them a heads up. I'm going to be stopping by probably with my camera. <laughs> I'll be ambushing them. Usually I'll call ahead of time and ask them if they mind if I film. So it's not just a total ambush. Let me see. Palmer's Aquatics. Donald Fish Vibe says, check out Palmer's Aquatics. Good knowledge on South American. Okay, I will. Any lead you can give me, I will definitely do a little research on them. Um, Striker R, are you going to give salt a try? Um, yes. I, I am, again, I've got a lot, I've got a, a steep learning curve already and all of the activity of setting up the tanks, uh, setting up the filtration, getting the tanks uh, cycled and all that good stuff. But salt uh, is, uh, is definitely on the list. I love coral. I love coral and I love the colors of salt as beautiful as discus are and as beautiful as, as South American and... Uh, you know, salt is the king. Salt, you can't, the patterns, the shapes and, and the patterns and the colors, it's, they, it really is the king of color when you're talking about, when you're talking about uh, keeping fish. Let me see, Grumpy Mike's, I wish acrylic was more mainstream. Yeah, and, and, and if it was, I'd probably find more of them on the used list. They're just very hard to find. And if you buy them new, you you got to pay a fortune. Adam Moore, Adam D. Moore, will miss the coffee and cichlids while you're moving. Excited to see all the new content and move through. Congratulations on this new chapter. This is really a new chapter for me. And... Uh, you know, my, my kids are always kind of a, a surprise. I mean, here I am, 65 years old, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm jumping into stuff, jumping into live streaming, jumping into becoming a YouTuber, jumping into the... So um, anyway, you, you gotta, it's got to stay interesting. It's got to stay interesting, or you uh, shrivel up and, uh, and uh, dry up and blow away. So um, let's see here. Florida has the best breeders. Well, I'm going to be closer to Florida, so that's good news. And one of the things I look for when I buy fish from uh, folks that ship them is how how far away are they. And I try not to, uh, I certainly in the winter or in the peak of summer where temperatures are so drastic, I try not to buy from vendors that are too far away because you can end up with a you know a cooked fish or a frozen fish, even though you know they package them very 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 well and some vendors will not ship in severe weather situations and that's something i admire when when vendors do that uh but certainly being in tennessee i'm probably going to have access to more of the east coast like i've never ordered from southeast cichlids and uh, and i know imperial is down in florida and um and i think i think the uh, wonder of cichlids is east coast i think and so I'll be able to take advantage of some of these, you know, East Coast vendors a little bit more easily. 
So uh, that's the plan at this point. I mean, the plan is going to be to um, to get into those those varieties of fish. Certainly, African cichlids are on the uh, are going to be at the top of the list. But uh, I'm very excited about about uh, some of these other varieties of fish. They're 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 just they just intrigue me, and the colors are are just amazing to me, and. Um, you know the Dempseys, the the uh, the Salvini, uh, even the Viejas. To me, those colors are just gorgeous. You know they're kind of like uh, pastels, and so uh, I'm going to be learning about what I can put together, and uh, and what kind of water parameters they need. Any advice and help you give me is going to be greatly appreciated. Comments under this video, uh, advice, vendors I can use, uh, things of that nature are going to be uh, is going to be very, very important to me. And uh, look for look for the upcoming uh, videos. There is going to be a constant um, there's going to be a constant release of upcoming videos. Don't don't unsub <laughs> uh, because you you are going to be getting content. And of course, the Piscine. Uh, masterclass on on fish food is going to be coming out so look for that as well and uh, for those of you who have uh, uh, subbed to the channel thank you so much be sure to um, be sure to stop by the uh, the Facebook page the uh, the Facebook group page right here it's a great it's a great group shares a lot of great information and um, every month we do a, a contest and uh, the person who gets wins the banner, the best photo, they end up they end up uh, getting a, a gift certificate from our friends at Super Cichlids over in Dover, Delaware. If you're not familiar with Super Cichlids, check them out. A family-owned business uh, like the Cichlid Shack, like Cunningham, like Wonder of Cichlids. These are family-owned businesses, and uh, they really need support, especially during this crazy time we're in. Uh, so support these local vendors, these local stores. And uh, Super Cichlids helps to uh, support the, the Facebook group by, by giving a, a gift certificate uh, for the store each month to people who win the banner contest. Uh, also, uh, follow, on, uh, follow right here on Instagram for some behind-the-scenes content. And uh, I'll be posting some short little videos to Instagram as I travel across the United States, anything unusual or funny that we see. I want to thank all of you, you wonderful folks, for um, going through this learning curve with me on live streaming. It's certainly been uh, an adventure. I want to thank my wonderful uh, moderators for all of their support. And, uh, you know, they, they volunteer for this. They don't get paid. And so, um, and they do a wonderful job. So thank you to all of you. And thank you to all of you who watch the video, you know, for pushing me up over 30,000. That to me is just epic and, and awesome. Never anticipated that much activity on the channel. So uh, with that being said, uh, I will say goodbye to you for now. And uh, so long. I'm going to miss you. I really am. And uh, I do love this live interaction with you. And uh, it's very heartfelt when I say I am going to miss you. And uh, I hope to, to interact with you on a live basis again very soon. And uh, with that, I think I'll end off. And uh, before I get sentimental, Thank you, everybody, and uh, you really do rock. Bye-bye.